Kennedy became president at the very beginning of a fairly long, lengthy, but uh, terrifying climax of that stage of the Cold War, which was called the Berlin Crisis. The Berlin Crisis began under Eisenhower. Uh, the cancellation the, in the uh, spring of 1960 of the summit meeting between Eisenhower and Khrushchev over the shooting down of the U-2 plane. The heat around Berlin had begun to rise, and that's when Kennedy became president. Uh, the Berlin crisis would uh, be even more dangerous than the Bay of Pigs crisis that came that spring. That summer, that next summer, is when we almost went to war over Berlin. And it was because Kennedy addressed the possibility of war over Berlin so directly and said no to it that he was prepared for Cuba a year later. So my experience at that time, subliminal, uh, unaware, was the experience of being a people marched to the edge of the nuclear abyss. That's quite literally where we were standing. And it would come, we would become fully aware of it over the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, not two years later. And Kennedy walked to the edge of that abyss with us. And then during the Cuban Missile Crisis, he showed us a way back. And then the, defined that way back only a few months after that with his great explicit declaration of peace at American University, the speech he gave only a few months before he was murdered. And the thing that was compelling about the speech in American University, of course, is the call to universal peace addressed to the people in the Soviet Union as well as in America was rooted in, as he put it, his own sense of mortality. We are all mortal, he said, and we all want the same thing for our children's future. And that call to something common reached across the Cold War divide in an unprecedented way changed the way the Soviet people thought of him and Americans, and it changed the way we Americans thought of ourselves. And it's not an accident that it was only weeks later that the Soviet Union and the United States finally achieved the Partial Tespian Treaty, which was the beginning of the arms control regime that has continued even to this day, and that in fact is now in jeopardy uh, today. Uh, the process of arms control negotiation was the structure that enabled the Cold War to end nonviolently. Kennedy called for it in his inaugural address. He says in the inaugural address, we need serious and precise terms for arms control. And the most important thing he did as president, in my view, was he established those serious and precise terms for arms control that led to the first treaty which was the ground then of the negotiations that enabled the Soviet Union and the United States to lay down their arms and end the conflict nonviolently.